someone to dictate the fear in yourself, to dictate, you know, so you can't be who you are, then you really should grow a set of cojones and, <laughs> and, and speak up and be up. I, 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 I did, I had producers say to me, you know, in fact, it was what someone said to me, um, and this producer was gay themselves, and they said, you know, you can't, you shouldn't say about, you know, your partner, you shouldn't talk about this, you shouldn't do that, you shouldn't be who you are, and I went back to Scott and I said, look, what do I do? And he said, well, what do you want to do? And I said, well, I'm not going to ask you to hide and pretend that, and go to a function and then pretend to have a girl in my arm just because some people aren't comfortable with it. That's not my problem. So I'm going to be who I am. And I, and I, I basically said, no, I'm not going to do it. You know, and they weren't cool with that. But you know what? That's their, their bad. And if they want to write me out or put me out of a show because of that, I don't care. I don't want to be in a show with people like that. You know, so... It is hard, you know. I'm, I'm, sorry, I'm, it's still, I sound, I'm sorry, I sound like I'm preaching about it, but, and I guess I am a little bit, but I, you know, people shouldn't be forced to come out of the closet. There's certain reasons some people don't want to, you know, be open about who they are, and if it's a personal issue and an emotional issue, it's none of our business to out somebody, right? Everybody's got to do it in their own time. So if, but if someone's saying they're not going to do it because they're afraid they're going to lose their job, you know, that's something you really need to sit down and think about. Do you really want to work for people that are like that? And, uh, you know, again, it's changing. It's all changing out there. And the more people who stand up and don't take that kind of behavior, the easier it's going to be for that, uh, you know, young man and young girl going through puberty at the moment who are realizing that they are gay and, and lesbian, they can look up to all the rest of us and go, you know what, it's going to be a heck of a lot easier. And that's what it's about. <laughs> Who's next? Hi. Red hair and glasses. Hi. Um, Hi. I, I, I just want to say, uh, John, I know you've done a lot of theater, um, and I wondered, how does, did you take anything from your theater experiences when you're preparing for television roles, and which do you prefer? I never answer which I prefer, because as soon as I say what my favorite is, I'll be pigeonholed, and I love the diversity of my career at the moment. Um, I, do I take anything from theater to television? I, I guess you take a little bit of everything, you know, a little bit of pizzazz and show business. I mean, I'll... <laughs> I don't know, it's, it's, a lot of people say, you know, it used to be the old thing, they'd say musical theater people it couldn't do television, but a lot of actors, you know, very good ones come from musical theater, and a lot of people from television go into theater, so it's kind of a great, great crossover. What I do love is that the fans have realized that, you know, sci-fi is a, a world of heightened reality, as is musical theater, and a lot of people have come over to musical theater, and you've got shows like Wicked, which are dealing with... <laughs> You know all sorts of different uh, uh, things, and uh, you know who's who's you know. Uh, <laughs> you never know; there might be another big sci-fi musical one day to come along. So you you know it's th those are the kind of great things. So I think the crossover is great, and I know a lot of you guys have, have crossed over into those different worlds, and it's fab. On a, a follow-up to that, yeah. uh, you recently were uh, doing some hosting work at Comic Con, uh, being the interviewer. Yeah. Which do you prefer, being yourself in those instances, or just, do you prefer being characters in, in entertainment? Well, again, I'm, I'm not going to say. <laughs> because I enjoy, I enjoy that I can go on television and be someone like Captain Jack or the well-dressed man or uh, a villain in Desperate Housewives. Uh, you know, and then, I, and then a week later, like in two weeks, I am hosting G4 again, Attack of the Show, for a whole week. So I get to go and do that. And I get to be... I get to be a fan geek and a nerd because I get to interview the people that, you know, I think are awesome and I kind of sit there and go <laughs> But what I love about it is I get to have a conversation. I think, you know, I was, the first time I ever hosted a, a show in Britain, a live show, I was like writing all the questions out, and you guys know this, you plan ahead, but interviews never go that way unless the person you're talking to doesn't talk. Yeah. That's nightmare. You know, yeah. so what was it like working the movie? Good. <laughs> and then you're like, oh god, I gotta fill ten minutes. <laughs> so it's I enjoy I enjoy every aspect of what I do and I love I I love doing things where I <laughs> I love to talk. <laughs> 
where I get to talk and, and, and talk to people. But you also have an essence that's kind of like that old razzle-dazzle kind of like early Hollywood. Like you, you, you have that. It's called gay. <laughs> No, I, I, I consider myself, I know what you're saying, I consider myself to be an entertainer. I don't, you know, I don't shy away from people who say, you, you, you know, oh, I'm, I'm just an actor, you know. I'm an actor, I'm a singer, uh, I dance, uh, well, I move, I don't really dance. Um, I saw your single ladies dance. Did you? That was, that, that was not meant to be online. That was a company that did our, did our graphics for uh, my, my entertainment show, uh, Tonight's the Night on the BBC, and, um, which CBC, CB, CBC didn't want to buy, so that Canada didn't get it. Right to them. Right to them. No. No, no, no. It's an awesome show. I'd love to bring it to, to, to North America. But yeah, it's... Um, uh, I've lost where I've been talking. I'm talking right. about you pizzazz. Can, pizzazz. Yeah. You can dance. Too. I'm an entertainer. No. I, I don't shy away from that, and I love, I love what I do. Angela, where are you? And no, no, yes, no, no. there, down the aisle. Yes. First off, this thing is heavy as heck. <laughs> and actually, you had a perfect lead up to the question I had. I was going to see if you would do single ladies for the crowd here. Or yeah! I don't even remember what I did. <laughs> I can't do it. You know, you can't dance a cappella. You just can't. Oh, no, no, no. We'll see. We'll see. My voice is really tired because I've been talking to everybody at the table and, uh, you know, I've been going to strip clubs at night. And, uh... <laughs> Lots of hooting and hollering. <laughs> I have to tell you something really funny. I did get a lap dance last night. <laughs> so... You be me. <laughs> you be me. So, <laughs> many, many of you ever had a lap dance before? Yeah, whatever. Uh, you're just not going to admit it. So I'm getting, you know, and you, you, they, and you get all the rules, right? Okay. I'm not going to go into what the rules are. So sit there, kind of like giggly and a little nervous, okay? <laughs> and I get, I, I'm getting this, and I'm getting this, and da 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 da. But the whole time, it was a guy, obviously. He's going. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, I didn't hear the <laughs> anymore. It stopped. So I'm like, thank you very much, there's your money. You know, and he, he's giving me all the... Right? So I give him the money, thank you very much. I go home. It wasn't that exciting, was it? I go home, and, I, and Scott, you know, we're going up back to the hotel room, and I'm like, honey, I gotta go to bed. And I'm like, oh my God, what is that? <laughs> my pants were stuck together. The dude had spit his gum out. Oh. And they stuck, and my, so I'm like walking, and the gum is stretching between my trousers. Isn't that awful? Oh, and then another one. I was in a taxi. In a taxi yesterday, uh, going, we were going to a restaurant, you know, having dinner before we went for a lap dance. Um, and we're having dinner, we're going to dinner, and this guy, he's in the cab. Now, I'm, I'm not making fun of accents here, trust me, because I've, I grew up with that happening. But the guy, he really, you know, talked really like we, uh, okay, everything, you know, he sounded like he was from Minnesota, yeah. <laughs> and he's talking to me, and he says, oh, do you re what, what show are you on, you famous? And I'm like, yeah, well, sort of. Um, uh, I'm on Doctor Who and Torchwood. Oh yeah, Torchwood, Torchwood, I heard about that. Didn't they take that off the air because that guy was gay? <laughs> Scott went like this. 
And I went, no, that, I said, no, 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 we don't, we don't know if it's coming back yet or not, so it's still up in the air. I said, but you know, they didn't take it off because that guy was gay. I said, because I am that fucking guy. <laughs> and his face just went, hmm? <laughs> Oh, 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 okay, okay, and he almost hit a car in front of us. <laughs> His foot went off the brake into the accelerator. Anyway, I love Canada. Did I tip him? Did I tip him? Yeah. No. Thank you. I took some gum off my pants and I stuck it on his seat. Where is the mic? It's way off on the right side. On the right, okay. What about the left side? Angela, gotta relocate next. Yeah, Angela, get those legs working. <laughs> uh, good afternoon, Mr. Barrowman. My name's Lila McLoche, and I'm a self-identified member of the LGBTQ community, an avid sci-fi fan, and a musical theater nerd. And you embody three of my deepest passions in the world, and I'm honored to be in this room with you today. And someone double dog dared me on this one. And, oh, Jesus. Um, <laughs> a lesbian with a dare. So, um, if you're up to it and willing, I'd love to sing one verse of All I Ask of You from Phantom of the Opera with you. I'll start. Okay, but, you're, but your key's gonna, you're gonna be a lot. You want me to go lower for you? You're gonna be butcher than I am in this one. <laughs> Jeez, I hope this works. <laughs> All I want is freedom, a world with me, and you always beside me, to hold me and to hide me. Then say you'll share with me one love, one lifetime. Let me lead you to your solitude. I don't know if it's the right word. Or like Oods, he's so small-minded, no. But say to me, I see who you truly are, Jack. A man on whom I can rely. And that's how we'll begin, the doctor and I. I should really do the panels on the first day, so my voice isn't wrecked by the third day. Beautiful. Do we make it to left end? Yay. Hello. Hi. Um, I'm going to go back to 2000 here. You were in a play called Putting It All Together. Putting It Together. Putting It Together. Yep. Two minutes into the second act. <laughs> yeah, Carol Burnett's Carol Burnett skirt fell. Drops her skirt. <laughs> yes. Is the, I did not realize someone could jump in the air and roll on the floor simultaneously. You were <laughs> so exuberant in your laughter there. Is there any other moment? that exceeds that in terms of the shock and hilarity in any other production you've done or what's a close second? Uh, I mean, I've had a lot of fun things happen to me in the middle of productions and, and things like that, but I, the first thing that comes to mind because it's sci-fi related, uh, uh, any of you have, that's a, I did uh, Putting It Together on Broadway and Carol Burnett was one of, growing up, one of the ladies I loved on television and and to have something like that happen where she walked out on stage and she kept looking at me really strange and she's going and all of a sudden she just raised her hands and her skirt fell and she's standing there in tights her underpants and a sequin top and it was the best image ever 
But I, used to, I get up to a lot of mischief, and uh, Arrow has yet to experience some of this. Um, but with Eve, I don't know if you, the, I can't remember the episode exactly, but it was the one where I was in concrete. <clears throat> in Torchwood, I was embedded in concrete, and Yanto had, drove a tractor and threw the tractor, the, the, the concrete block off the edge of the cliff, and it smashed, and I climbed out of the concrete completely naked. <laughs> <laughs> so they have to they have to drive up in a car, uh, Kai, uh, Eve, and Gareth, and I'm I'm supposed to come out, and I am come. I, listen, I'm com they're like family to me, so we've all seen each other naked, right? And for goodness' sake, I slept with Eve, not in that way. Um, so I'm standing there. And before we rolled, I didn't let them see me because I wanted them to feel the impact of the moment. <laughs> anyway, I warmed things up a little. And uh, I tied something to myself. And I, I got out and I just started doing that. And they, they came out of the car, and honest to God, if you look at the, the shots, Eve's face, she keeps doing this. And it's not be, it's because really she is so, she's ready to laugh. And she's like, I hate you for that, because every time I would do a close-up, or it was her close-up, I would get the kids out, really, and try to throw her off. But then she, I, I had to walk towards them, and the best part was, you know, they're like, the nakedness didn't bother you, John, but I had, I don't know what you call them here, we call them Lilettes with Wings. Do you know what I'm, you know, sanitary napkins? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm walking on rocks and puddles, and you think with all the technology they'd give me some rubber shoes? No, they stuck sanitary napkins <laughs> to my feet. Eve says a line to me, and I go... <laughs> Camera's over there, they can't see it. But they fill up with a shitload of water, let me tell you. <laughs> it was like having weights on my feet. <laughs> Brilliant. So those are the kind of things that we get up to. Way at the back there. Yeah. Hello, thank, thank you very much. Hi. I just wanted to say just... We, it's said it a couple times, but thank you so much for portraying such a positive role model on TV, like main star, action hero, my pleasure. jack of all trades, you know, pardon the pun. But uh, <laughs> my question is uh, actually with work with your sister, because you, you've done several books, you did a Torchwood book, and I know personally speaking, if I worked with my sister, one of us would end up murdered, probably. <laughs> well, we, we, we sometimes, you know, want to murder each other. But my sister and I have a really good time. Sorry, are you are you done? Yeah, what's the question? How did how did that come about? Like, did you did she go to you? You go to her? Was it something else? Well, I got it. I I have to tell you, it it sort of goes back, and that's where my show tonight's the night came from about making people's dreams come true. Because my dream was always to do something like this. I never thought that when I was a little boy, that one day, you know, sitting on that sofa or hiding behind it, watching a TV show about a man traveling through time in a blue police box. Did I ever think that one day I would be in that police box and become one of those heroes that kids would just sit and watch and do the same for? So I, it was a huge, I'm a big believer in dreams and, and, and thinking positive no matter what happens in your life. So for me, having my dreams come true because it's because of you guys that I live the life that is unbelievable and I truly want you to know that I am absolutely grateful and that's why I'm not an asshole, okay? <laughs> and say hello or want something signed or a photograph if it's not under these kind of controlled circumstances I am so happy to do it because you've given me that life so I now look at other people and that's why I mentor a lot of younger uh, actors and, thing, and, and things in the UK and also my sister her big dream was to become an author so I knew that book companies were coming to me to write books and I'm ta I, I don't have that talent to, to, or gift to actually physically write the books. I tell the stories, I, I put them on this, and then I send her all the information or she comes live with me, to, with me for three weeks. We do all that kind of work. 
and then she goes away and she sits down and does the hard work and puts the, wor the, the words on the page, creates the voice for me and captures it exceptionally well. So that was, I was the one who approached her and they, when they did the autobiographies, I said, I will only write them with my sister and she will be my writer with everything that I do from now on. And consequently, both of us, I've, you know, on the back of her talent, uh, we've become best-selling authors, uh, you know, and it's a big dream for her and she's now living her dream. So we continue to do it. You know, Hollow Earth is doing really well. My production company, we've sold the TV rights for Hollow Earth because I want to bring it onto television. It'll be a great, you know, sci-fi adventure for young kids. Um, and, and adults will love it too. Uh, the Torchwood novel, which we have just finished, uh, you know, BBC uh, books and everything, and um, sorry, uh, yeah, uh, they've, everybody's approved the, the, the story and done all their little, you know, checks and marks and everything. There was like only three changes made. We had to take out the F word because Jack doesn't swear. Uh, so it's, it's Exodus Code, that comes out later on this year, and I'm just so chuffed that, you know, you guys want to read them and, and are excited about it, and I'm chuffed that we're able to make, you know, with your help, my sister's dream come true. So again, I'm saying thank you to, for her. So, yeah. Woo! Good time for a couple more questions. I, I, won't, I won't talk as long, sorry. You've had your hand up forever, so, Shep. Yeah. Shout it out, girl. Shout it out. Um, I've heard, first of all, that um, you have a natural double accent. Uh-huh. Meaning... I'm bi-dialectical. <laughs> I, well, I can say a lot in Scottish. <laughs> the only reason that I, sometimes, I know a lot of people are coming up to me and at the table, they're asking me to do my Scottish accent, and I say this now, the reason I started to speak American when I came to the US when I was about nine years old is because people made fun of this accent, and I was bullied, and rather than being bullied, I decided to play them at their own game, so I learned how to speak American. Now, it's, it's not a conscious thing for me, it just happens. I can, I don't have to think about it. I can turn it off and on any time I want because when I'm with my mum and my dad and my sister and my, my brother, we speak Scottish. But when we turn and speak to my niece and nephew, Claire and Turner, I speak American. So it just completely flips. I am, you know, it's, it's nothing, it's not thought out, it's not planned because some people think I'm faking it and it's not, it's part of who I am. So that's why my sister and I created in, in the first book, Anything Goes, that word, Bi-dialectical. It's probably the one and only time I ever will be bi. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the making of me? Correct. The, main, the question is that the, I did a documentary called The Making of Me, which was the, whether it was nature or nurture. Uh, to decide your sexuality and uh, the reason I did it was because you know nobody really knew it that people well we kind of we do I know it's because you're born that way so it's it's nature um, but they wanted me to do it because they said what if you find out it is nurture um, will it change who you are and I you know that that was the big question for me and I said well you know I have to deal with that when it comes but in my head I knew it was never gonna happen that documentary has been received exceptionally well all over the world. I have people from places like Russia and uh, South Korea who come up to me and, and say, you know, we saw that, that's the one program they've seen and uh, they are, you know, so happy because it's changed a lot of people's attitudes about it. And in fact, I was talking to a young girl uh, at the table earlier who, uh, you know, uh, was thinking about coming out to her parents and she was saying to me, at the table, you know, and I said, well, show the making of me, and that might be the progression that will help, but, you know, that's, so I'm really proud of that program. You. You're welcome. Oh, is it last question? Oh. <laughs> Two more? <laughs> when do we have to finish? Never. Never. We have to finish at three. <laughs> no, we have, no, we don't have to finish it. Three, it's quarter to one. We have three minutes. Go, question. <laughs> you, you've 
talked about your excitement and about your new role in Arrow. So when you get a script, what is it that makes you say, yes, yes, oh my god, yes? <laughs> I didn't understand that. You need to speak a little clearer and hold them and shout and, and speak up. You've talked about your excitement, about your new role in Arrow. So when you get a script, what is it that makes you say, yes, yes, oh my god, yes? <laughs> you talked about your excitement. Uh, so sorry. You talked about your excitement in getting the role uh, in Arrow. So oh, when yes. you get a script, what is it about that script that makes you say, yes, yes? <laughs> You're so gullible. <laughs> um, you know what? It's about story, and it's also about, you know, a little bit about, you know, I can't say too much about Arrow, but we all know where it kind of comes from. Yeah. 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 I'm not saying, but we all know where it kind of comes from, right? You know, and, and, I, and that's what excites me. It's because, and I only do jobs because I want to do them. Um, I won't, I, you know, I've done jobs before where I've done it for the money and I've had an awful time. So I learned a lesson very, very early on in my career. And now, you know, whether the job pays a lot or a little, I'll do it because I want to do it. And I think that's, that gives you the, the, the best kind of bank balance, which is here and here. Last one. Anyone from the center? The lady in red. Captain Jack meets Sherlock. <laughs> Captain Jack meets Sherlock. Yeah. What happens? Benedict. Mm. <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, my coat is better. <laughs> and if you look at it, uh, the, the promo shots for that, I was flipping through iTunes and I came across this promo shot for Sherlock and it looked an awful lot like the Torchwood promo shot. <laughs> with the coat blowing. So um, I take it as a very big compliment. I would, you know, Captain Jack, I don't know if he would ever, uh, no, he could never go on to that. No. But, you know, in fan fiction, you guys can write whatever the hell you want. So we have to wrap things up. So do you have any last words for, for fans? Um, I, you know, it's always hard to, that's not really, no, I just, just know that I absolutely appreciate everything that you've done for me, that you do for me, and that's why I love to come to these things. I am as a big a geek as you are. I'm proud to be part of the, the, the sci-fi world, and I love the fact that you love what I do, and I will all, I'll continue to do it as long as you want to be a part of it. Absolutely. <laughs>